masks are pointless. Your chances of walking past a person with the illness or being on the same train or bus as them are not much higher than winning the lottery. So by wearing masks, you're unnecessarily using a resource that's needed for health workers who will be directly exposed to infected patients and needed for people with the illness to cut the chances of them spreading it. Masks work. They can reduce transmission by around 70% and have been underutilised in Australia largely because the group advising the National Cabinet has in the past offered qualified support for their use. The Victorian Government has now mandated masks for Melbourne and Mitchell Shire, but New South Wales is leaving it up to personal choice. And for everyone trying to work out how to wear one of these properly, here's a reminder. Wash your hands. Hold it by the sides, don't touch the mask itself. Put it on over your nose, under your chin, and behind your ears. And to take it off, you do the same thing. Don't touch the mask itself, take it off from behind your ears, put it down, and wash your hands again. It's as easy as that. Masks are pointless. Masks work. Masks are pointless. Masks work. And staying apart keeps us together. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. Just listen to the conflicting information coming out of experts' mouths for, say, the next year or two, maybe more, and everything will be A-OK. -okay. It's a bit of an information war, isn't it? How do masks go from being pointless and ineffective in March, but then just four short months later, they've suddenly become a mandatory item? One must question the motives of the good doctor. I think there's no question that the Premier of New South Wales should place New South Wales in an immediate lockdown, and they need to mandate masks. It's just breathtaking that they are still pleading with people to wear masks. He seems to have doubled down on his mask-wearing diatribe. Also back in March, maybe you remember the headlines, I do, the experts were saying that coronavirus was ten times deadlier than the seasonal flu. Well, since then, some actual research has been conducted, being published only a few days ago by the Lancet Medical Journal, saying that the virus is now only three times as deadly as the flu. So in March, it was ten times as deadly as the flu, and masks were pointless and ineffective. But now the virus is only three times as deadly, but masks are mandatory. Well, in some parts of Australia at least. It seems to defy logic. But of course, we can't trust the media to report these things accurately. Looking at the actual journal article on The Lancet's website, the research found a standardised mortality ratio of 2.82. Therefore, the number of observed deaths was considerably higher than what would be expected if the COVID-19 population had the same probability of dying as the influenza population. So the media are saying that the coronavirus is three times as deadly as regular flu, but the actual paper reports 2.82. OK, it's close, but why don't the media just say the real number? Why? Because three times more deadly sounds a lot worse than 2.82. Anyway, it's only a minor detail, I suppose. The media are guilty of a lot worse. But it's still funny how the virus has become a lot less deadly as the pandemic rolls on, but yet the rules have increasingly become more draconian. So what this research does point out is that people who catch the flu also die. I think we all knew that, but we just didn't go running around like chickens with our heads cut off. According to this research, patients admitted to hospital in early 2019 in France with the normal seasonal flu, so not during the coronavirus pandemic, 5.8% of them died compared to COVID's 16.9%. But still, that's pretty deadly, remembering that these percentages are based on people who were hospitalised. Most people who catch these illnesses are never hospitalised, so the actual death rate in the general community is much lower. Anyway, the point being, the normal flu is still deadly. Earlier in the year, I somewhat jokingly said that obesity kills many times more people than the coronavirus ever will. I was right. But as it turns out in these latest findings, obese patients are much more likely to die from coronavirus. Children, as we all should know by now, are much less likely to suffer the ill effects of COVID. Only 1,227 children were hospitalised with COVID in this study, compared with 8,942 children who were hospitalised with the regular flu, remembering that there was almost twice as many people in the COVID group as there were in the flu group. Three children in this sample were reported from dying from COVID-19, whereas 13 children died from seasonal flu. 
When it comes to seasonal flu, the Australian government's own Department of Health have issued a warning saying that results should be interpreted with caution. As you can see in their graph, the number of reported flu cases in 2020, shown in red, has been significantly less than previous years. Much less, actually. Some people say it's because of social distancing, others say it's because of less testing. Either way, the government don't offer an explanation, so I'll leave that up to you to think why that might be. Regardless, the regular flu can be pretty deadly as well, but yet we've never had any of these mask mandates, lockdowns, and forced social distancing. If people like Dr. Swan are going around saying that all people should wear a mask to stop the spread of a virus that potentially kills people, then we should always wear a mask. There are always viruses floating around that kill some people, and I emphasise the word some. Some people die from coronavirus, some people die from the flu. The only difference is that we're treating coronavirus like it's 100 times deadlier, not 2.82. New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard said contact tracing efforts have been hampered by people who have been lying when checking into venues. What we are finding is that some of the visitors to various venues still think that it is funny to be caught putting in there that you're Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse or a false phone number. That must stop. This is a worldwide COVID pandemic, and thinking it's smart to call yourself Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse is about as stupid as it gets. So that must cease. Personally, I don't think people are trying to be funny. I think people are standing up for their right to privacy. Where I live, there is no coronavirus, so I think it's absolutely useless to give out my private details to strangers five times a day. If there really is a coronavirus outbreak, the government and the media always publish the locations, so if I know that I've been to one of those hotspots, I'll get myself tested. Anyway, I'll leave that up to you. If you can't remember where you've been or need the reassurance that the government are watching your back, well, feel free to hand over your private information wherever you go. But for me, no thank you. I'll continue checking in as John Smith or Ted Roosevelt. By the way, Mr. Hazard, calling people stupid is not a good way to get them on side. Actually, it will probably have the opposite effect. So, good one. Christmas is systematically being cancelled across the globe. It's still unsure whether or not Sydney siders will get to enjoy Christmas with their families or not. Celebrities and international experts have praised Australia's handling of the virus, acting like Australians are so much smarter than the rest of the world. I'd just like to call BS on that. Australia is a huge island country with a relatively low population. It's as big as the contiguous United States, but only has about 7.6% of the population. The same goes for the UK. Australia is about 32 times bigger than the UK, but only has about 37.5% of the population. Australia has a sparse population, relatively speaking. The UK and the US are packed to the gills with people. Of course it will be easier to manage virus outbreaks in Australia. Melbourne and Sydney are obviously pretty dense, hence why they keep bearing the brunt of these outbreaks. If you stick lots of people in the same place, expect outbreaks of disease. That's been true throughout human civilization. Anyway, most importantly, remember… Masks are pointless. Masks work. Masks are pointless. Masks work. And staying apart keeps us together. It's as easy as that.